In the United States, a secret memo detailed a year-long drone enforcement administration operation that sent undercover operatives into Venezuela to record a build and build drug trafficking cases against the country's leaders, including President Nicolas Maduro. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society denounced the continuous attacks and siege by the Israeli Occupation Army against Al Amal Hospital in Khan Yunis for the 11th consecutive day. Burkina Faso's Prime Minister Apollinar Joachim Kelem de Tambela justified on Thursday his country's decision announced last week to leave the community of West African states ECOWAS. Hello and welcome to From the South. I'm Alejandra Garcia from Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. A U.S. news out outlet revealed on Thursday that the Drug Enforcement Administration, or DEA, infiltrated agents in Venezuela to secretly record and build false drug trafficking cases against the country's leaders. According to AP News Agency, they obtained a 15-page memo from 2018 on an operation which targeted a dozen officials, including Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro. The document clearly stated that it was necessary to carry out this operation unilaterally and without notifying the Venezuelan authorities. The re revelation threatens to shake already strained relations with the Venezuelan government and could deepen resentment throughout the Latin America region towards, Ven towards Washington for its history of meddling in the internal affairs of the countries in the region. In recent days, the president of Venezuela has accused the DEA and the CIA of undertaking efforts to destabilize Venezuela, an accusation the CIA declined to comment on. Protesters and police officers clash outside Argentina's lower house of Congress in Buenos Aires as the institution continues to debate President Javier Milei's mega bill to reform the economy, politics and private life. The delegated powers demanded by President Javier Milei were the main topic of the debate in the Argentine Congress on Thursday on the more than 300 economic and political reforms promoted by the ultra-right government. In a tense climate, to the op two opposition protesters repressed by the police. For the second consecutive day, the Chamber of Deputies have been in session to approve part of the omnibus law bill. The opposition criticized reforms to the penal code that would criminalize street protests and allow the privatization of public companies and above all the dele delegated powers which will give green light for Millet to rule by decree in numerous areas. Guatemala's President Bernardo Arevalo said Thursday that with his political party suspended, little support in Congress, and Attorney General in hot pursuit, he will appeal to the people to help him achieve the change he promised. Arevalo won the presidency in August, beating the establishment candidate by a comfortable margin. The politician with a background in conflict resolution promised to challenge the country's entrenched power structure and resuming the fight against corruption. The face of the resistance to change is Attorney General Consuelo Porras, sanctioned by the U.S. government for allegedly undermining Guatemala's democracy. Porras has used her office autonomy to pursue Arevalo and his party since he won a spot in the presidential runoff election last year. At the end of these four years, the objective is for the balance to be clearly and overwhelmingly positive for the population. The people of Guatemala chose to turn away from the perverse path we were on and opted instead for hope. It is not clear to us if she, Attorney General Porras, is going to finish her term because there are actions on the way and there will be actions by Congress, there will be legal actions. That is to say, what we are interested in is that the Attorney General's office stops acting against the law and against the democratic institutionality of the state. A sector of Warani indigenous people rejected Thursday the possibility of postponing the closure of an oil block inside the Yasuni Reserve in the Ecuadorian Amazon to finance President Daniel Novoa's war against drug trafficking. In 2023, in a referendum, Ecuadorians decided to suspend the exploitation of one of the several oil fields in the Yasuni. 
However, Novoa has said that the moratorium on the closure of Block 43 is a viable way to continue exploiting crude oil in the middle of the financial crisis. Enen Nenkimo, vice president of the Waurani Nationality of Ecuador, in a press conference transmitted from the Amazonian region, said that a part of Wau who live in the Amazonian park resolved to reject the in intention of a moratorium on the result of the popular referendum to continue exploiting oil in Yasuni. In Peru, forest and wildlife law reforms threaten to the survival of indigenous peoples in the Peruvian Amazon. The United Nations warned that these regulations could affect ancestral territories in the Peruvian Amazon, as well as legalize and encourage the plundering of their lands. They also warned that the norms on agricultural activities and the law that classifies lands would allow areas inhabited by ancestors to be automatically classified as agricultural exclusion. Ex Inclusion zones. Meanwhile, meanwhile, they said the bill comes at a time when the state has pending obligations to fulfill in terms of legal recognition and security of the territories of the native peoples. Peruvian authorities declared a state of emergency in the Department of La Libertad on the north or northern coast of the country due to high levels of crime. The governor of the department, Cesar Acuña, said that the measure will be enforced for 120 days with special attention to the capital city of Trujillo. In this context, the national police, in collaboration with the armed forces, will take control of the internal order of the region. Also, special operations will be developed to combat delinquency. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society denounced the continuous attacks and siege by the Israeli Occupation Army against Al Amal Hospital in Kanjunis for the 11th consecutive day. The society denounced that the Israeli forces continued their military incursions into the hospital and the Red Crescent facilities amid direct gunfire threatening the lives of staff and displaced citizens seeking refugee in the vicinity of the health center. They also reported that the Israeli military tanks surrounded the hospital from all directions, preventing the passage of ambulance teams into or out of the hospital facilities. In this regard, they warned that the hospital is suffering from a severe shortage of infant formula, food, and a critical shortage of medical supplies and fuel. In Israel, nine petitioners filed a lawsuit on Thursday with the Supreme Court asking it to declare Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu unfit for office. The petitioners, including former Israel Defense Forces chiefs Moshe Jaalong and Dan Halutz, believe that Netanyahu, who faces criminal charges, is in an obvious conflict of interest. The Harasset Daily indicates that the petitioners allege that the Prime Minister's actions are motivated by personal interests rather than those of the country, the public or the welfare of the hostages and their families. In November last year, the Public Prosecutor's Office in Istanbul, Turkey, received a petition accusing Netanyahu of committing war crimes, genocide and crimes against humanity in the Gaza Strip. Similarly, on December 29th, South Africa filed a request to initiate proceedings against Israel before the International Court of Justice in The Hague regarding its acts of genocidal nature committed in the Gaza Strip and to seek an urgent suspension of the Israeli military campaign. Children in the Gaza Strip denounced the outrages and abuses suffered at the hands of the Israeli occupation forces amid the total devastation of their homes. 
Relatives denounced that the Tel Aviv regime forced to disrupt and kidnap minors for 25 days in Rafat, demanding to know if their relatives are alive. Mi mamá tiene 40 años de edad. My mother is 40 years old. She is diabetic. One night, the youth came with some dogs to the house and they barked a lot. They confronted me and my brothers and my mother. The soldiers threatened us with their rifles and hit us on the floor. My mother begged them not to hurt us. They wanted to hit my mother in the head. Then they called me and my brother and my mother got very scared and told them that neither my brother nor I had anything to do with Hamas. She screamed and begged them. In this context, minors reported that they were kidnapped because of the aggression perpetrated by Israel, not only against them, but also against their family members. The soldiers forced me to take off my clothes. They left me alone with my underwear. They left me cold from 12 o'clock at night until 4 o'clock in the morning. We slept in the cold. Then they took us to the prisons in Israel, where they talked to us and asked us if we were from Hamas. They interrogated us. I answered them that I was still a child, that I didn't know anything about Hamas, and I don't want to know anything about Hamas, that I only went from home to school and from school to home, that I only stayed with my mother and my brothers, that I did not know anything about Hamas. They did not believe me. They told me that I was a liar. They hit me with a stick on my legs and belly. They light cigarettes and pull them out in my ear and on my legs. Then they kiss us with their boots. I can't stand the pain in my legs. Children also say they had not heard from their relatives and demanded to come back home safe and sound. What I know about my family is that they are in the north and I don't know if they are still alive or if something had happened to them that God forbid. I don't know how to communicate with them. I don't have a number to call them. I don't know anything about them in Rafa. When the Jews released us, they left us lying on the Rafa pass almost naked. Then they threw us some clothes to dress up and forced us to walk. Then the agency, then the agency offered us the tent and said they had nothing else to give us. We are penniless and have nothing to buy what we need. I don't want anything. The only thing I want is to go back home, to be reunited with my family and my parents. I don't ask for anything else. Los constantes bombardeos. The continuous bombing and raids by the Israeli occupation force have left thousands of Palestinians killed and displaced, as well as multiple damage in Gaza Strip. According to official reports, more than 27,000 dead and around 67,000 wounded have been reported since the beginning of the genocide in October 7, 2023. While many Western powers have frozen funding to the United Nations Agency for Refugees in Palestine, UNRWA, the Israeli government has not yet provided the United Nations with information on the accusations involving 12 members of the agency in the last attacks of October 7th. During a press conference, the Secretary General's spokesman, Stefan Dujarek, declared that the United Nations has requested written and truthful information on the evidence incriminating 12 agents, but that this has not been received. In a preventive act, the agency has dismissed nine of those allegedly involved, one is deceased, and the other two are awaiting confirmation of their identity. Likewise, the Internal Affairs Department has opened an investigation which is expected to yield results in the next two to three weeks. We have a second short break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people, constant news, coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and inform with Telesur. Final short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. Burkina Faso's Prime Minister Apollinaire Joachim Kielem de Tambela justified on Thursday his country's decision announced last week to leave the community of West African state ECOWAS. 
The Prime Minister said the decision taken by Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger on January 28th had been carefully considered and came after a thorough analysis of the institution and the possible consequences of the withdrawal. Authorities in those countries believe ECOWAS no longer meets the aspirations of the Sahelian peoples, rendering the alliance of the Sahel states necessary. On the other hand, Burkina Faso's premier also condemned ECOWAS sanctions against his country, uh, while Ma Mali and Niger accused the bloc of failure to assist its member states. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, appeals for peace during his visit of Port Sudan. Sudan's nine-month-old war has also has so far largely spared the country's east, but with the front line inching ever closer and reports of military training camps across the border in Eritrea, the fragile peace there is in danger. Sudan finds itself in a critical situation right now with the, the war raging in many parts of the country and uh, causing enormous suffering to its people. One and a half million Sudanese have already left the country as refugees themselves. I conveyed to the governor, through the minister, and I will continue to do this in my stay here in Sudan, my strongest appeal for peace. I understand that this is a complicated war with many political difficulties, but my appeal is not a political one. With nearly 8 million people displaced by the brutal conflict in Sudan, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, has called for urgent and additional support to respond to their needs. Second. I ask the government for maximum support and cooperation to all humanitarian agencies working in the country. There are still many complicated obstacles, administrative obstacles, security obstacles, and we need those obstacles to be removed to be more efficient in how we do our work. And I'm glad. In Italy, government authorities reported that inflation increased by 0.3% in January 24 compared to 2023. During a press conference, the National Statistics Institute assured that the annual growth of prices reached 0.8%, a figure that is higher than 0.6% registered in 2023. The specialists detailed that the acceleration trend in inflation is due to the increase in the prices of services such as transportation, which went from 3.7% to 4.3%. These increases were offset by 1.2% drop in the prices of services such as energy goods, which fell by 0.1%. On Thursday began a massive strike movement in Finland, which according to local authorities paralyzed most of the air traffic and closed workplaces in protest against labor reforms proposed by the government, which include cuts in social benefits. According to the organizers, some 300,000 people are expected to participate in the two-day strike. In this sense, the national airline Fin Air announced the cancellation of 550 flights, affecting around 60,000 passengers. On the other hand, several unions also warned that the trains across the country, subways, buses and streetcars in the capital will be paralyzed on Friday, while joining the call for strikes in the energy sectors, schools and health services. In turn, Prime Minister Petteri Orpo has argued that the country needs an export-oriented labor market model to boost competitiveness. However, unions have vowed to paralyze the country to force the government to back down. In Greece, university students clash with police Thursday during a demonstration against plans by the Conservative government to allow private universities to operate in the country. Several thousand university students and supporters marched through central Athens before clashing with police near Parliament. 
Police used tear gas against protesters. The center-right government of Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis is pushing to pass several key laws early in the new year, building on his landslide re-election victory in 2023 and his current huge lead in opinion polls. The government arguments that the measure will prevent thousands of Greek students from studying abroad each year. In recent weeks, the Greek administration has faced a series of protests from various professional groups triggered by the legislative reforms and the cost of living crisis. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesolienglish.net and join us on social media. Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok as well. For Telesur English, I'm Alejandra Garcia. Thank you for watching.